Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Eha Mathur. And uh, I'm a history student, so allow me to open this to, uh, session by sharing my own thoughts on this subject. And so when I was in college in the 80s, uh, the only uh, you know, kind of uh, additional opening to any other discipline besides my own subject were the two subsidiary subjects of Hindi and English. And the way we passed those two subjects with total jugaad is, you know, <laughs> I think batches after batches passed out like that. So it was just uh, history uh, that we studied in the, one of the best colleges of the country. So that was then. But uh, when I entered the world of work, and then you realize that uh, your own core knowledge doesn't suffice. So history tells us facts, but how people lived, what they thought, for that you need understanding of English literature. You should, uh, you know, for example, uh, what Spencer said about a particular period of history what the painting said, what Renaissance uh, time uh, philosophers felt. So you need an understanding of various disciplines. And then uh, about two or three years ago, there was, you know, I was attending a seminar of IGNC, that is Indira Gandhi National Center for Arts. And there, uh, there was this lady from NID Ahmedabad. Uh, and as a design professional, she has prepared a whole module on recreating the temples of South India from you know, early medieval period. So coming together of technology understanding, design understanding, and history and heritage. So, and then there's someone who is writing uh, as a lawyer, law professional books on um, uh, heritage regulations. So again, coming together of understanding of law and history and heritage. So I'm giving some examples of coming together of disciplines to set the tone. But uh, I think uh, on the face of it, the uh, dual degree provision is a very welcome uh, move. But from all of you experts, I would like to know the layers of you know, whether it's practical or not. So my first question is to ma'am you. Uh, about uh, do you think that the present infrastructure lends itself to dual degrees and um, what are the logistical challenges that you see from students, faculty, and admin perspective in institutions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you to be, you know, I'm grateful for the invite and to be part of this panel. It's an interesting uh, topic. Uh, it probably, I will not give all the answers, but maybe it would be good to ponder over the fact that dual degrees were not allowed earlier. So, uh, I, I don't fully understand why, but you can guess why it was not allowed earlier. There is a you know, nagging feeling of uh, loss of standard quality. You know, Indian higher education faces these three aspects of uh, you know, access, quality, and affordability. And we are still not out of that. So every time uh, people who have access, well, they can experiment and do more. And the quality has always been a concern. So I suppose when you are trying to do two, two degrees at the, you know, the time duration of one, then the load on you is too much. So the infrastructure wise, I'll come to the other points maybe later, but to precisely address the question you asked, infrastructure wise, people suddenly are feeling very happy and there is a new opening with online, etc. Some people would be doing one degree during the physical classes on a particular campus, that may be their major choice and over the weekends on online would be doing a second degree. Uh, so I don't think this is a very healthy way of going about learning the way you describe. And my only flag at this point would be that please don't confuse dual degrees with double majors, for example, or major minors, which for example in our universities we have been having for a long time. That's an efficient process understood well you don't have to repeat the same course in, for two different degrees or two different majors or major and minor. You sort of open it up to a multidisciplinary curriculum, earn enough minor uh, credits to get to graduate with a major and a minor degree. So they're complementary subjects. So I think that could be done. What is not clear to an administrator is, uh, and to students and particularly parents, since we have helicopter parents in this country, 
pouring over their uh, students, even at the, when they're adults. Point is that how do you actually choose to do this? Uh, what is the stage at which you apply? What is the process of selection? Because it's not an easy thing. So it's not for everybody. It's a good option to have for those who can. The load would be too much. And of course, uh, the, the, the edge in this ever competitive uh, career market uh, cannot be overemphasized. And you'd be better equipped, not necessarily better salaried, if you have two degrees in hand. So I think the real question is this online thing, who is doing the quality control? Who is doing the standardization? Who is counseling the students what is right for them? Who has actually gone into the details of understanding the students' aptitude and uh, need to, uh, to, to address that? And uh, then for the, you know, right now, for example, there's a lot of work going on. I'm partly involved uh, for NAC, recasting NAC to NAC, as NEP talks about. And there's a lot of thing going on about accreditation. How do you actually go about doing this? And that's still unanswered question. It's a step in the right direction, opening it up for those who need to do it. It should not become a fan. And my worry would always be for the ones that are underprivileged, uh, it's more marginalization as I see it. So more on that later. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, more thought on that, uh, Professor Khurana. Uh, sorry, Professor Khanna. Uh, so what logistical challenges do you see? Uh, specifically, you know, I was talking to someone and he said that, that uh, how do you, you know, how do students do two degrees at a time? And also, you know, the kind of challenges th that will be there in terms of, you know, uh, managing of the schedules. That is one thing. And uh, coming from NIIT University, do you think that in this scenario, education, ed, ed tools will be a blessing to some extent? Uh, thank you, ma'am. And uh, see, uh, when you look at dual degree, you just don't look at a dual degree. You look at how education would be or how learning would be in, in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years time. And this uh, extended years of career, a productive career, that would be, one could see, you know, very easily, there could be 60, 70 years of productive career. And a lot of upskilling, uh, reskilling would be required to, to have a productive career for 70 years. And also, the, the, the kind of knowledge that would be required to make somebody relevant. And that's what you do when you're a student, you pick up that knowledge, you, you, you build up your, your personality, you build up your physique and you become mature emotionally, physically, you know, mentally. So that purpose of education, which allows a person to have a happy and productive life, that aspect is, it's very difficult to see whether the traditional way of enrolling in one institute and remain committed to that degree and then have that experience of that university campus is, is going to suffice. It is not going to suffice because the kind of things that people are doing and the kind of problems that humanity, because ultimately it would be a problem that humanity would face, the civilization would face, that would you know work backwards into market and economy and knowledge sources and learning. So if you look at all of that, uh, a, a single degree done on one campus with a very fixed experience of that particular university is not going to be sufficient. It is going to be an age of you know synthesis of many, many ideas, many, many experiences. So in that sense, uh, dual degree is, is a step in that direction where, where you have that freedom. Now coming to the infrastructure, and I fully, fully agree with, uh, with Pa here about, about the challenges of, of accessibility, you know, affordability and quality, quality the most. You see, other things, you know, one can with scholarships, with this and that, and, and you know, all kind of digitalization and, and internet. Uh, all other things can be, can be you know, addressed with a lot more fuel, you know, being thrown in. Uh, but, but the quality is something that would be very, very difficult. So I fully uh, agree and understand that. Uh, the, the, the infrastructure, if you, the way I see, is that there will be a primary campus for a student, a primary degree for a student, and then uh, a host of other courses. And those would mean that something like academic bank of credit, a central repository, 
where all the credits are, are there and whatever a student does is counted towards a degree. All that will, will end with all these educational technology where at least in some measure, I, I won't say completely because we have had the experience of last two, three years and what has emerged out of this overwhelmingly, you know, everywhere that uh, these online uh, learning and teaching is not sufficient. It's only, you know, a compromise and the best in that situation. So we'll probably look at a hybrid model where in person, then online, educational tools and educational technology also would come in the learning methodologies. Uh, so the, the documentation part, the repository part is already picking up. The dissemination part, that's the internet, the data, the device, all that is accessible now. We have had that experience. The digitalization of everything, that is happening. The, the restrictions of time, space, and a person being there, those are not no longer there. So all these are steps in the right direction and would allow people to be based in one campus because that's a non-negotiable part to my mind. Uh, there is education that happens in the class, but at the same time, a person has to learn, a student has to learn so much more. Uh, so the, 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 while the domain knowledge can come, but what, what happens to other, other part of the person? So that actually one picks up on a campus. And if in these dual degrees, if there is no anchoring campus, then this experience a person, a young person after class 12th, when they move out from the family, typically, uh, they would pick up these things in a very unregulated, uh, random way from the society. And they, they'll pick it up from the street and from the, from, the, from the society, you see. That is not the best way to build up a generation. Uh, a university allows for people to make mistakes. You know, it, it creates an experience where students learn a lot of things other than what their domain is. So while we talk about the dual degree, the, it is important, not just a dual degree, but a primary degree and host of other courses around it, not just two, but maybe many, some certificates here and there, some diplomas here and there, all that would be necessary. The internet, the edutech companies, they are a step in the right direction. The NEP, the academic bank of credit and the freedom that the students have and all the accreditation that is now all the work that is going in and, 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 and really, you know, from a university perspective, a lot has changed in the accreditation over the last few years and at a very rapid pace. So all those elements are building up. Everything is building up. But uh, my flag would be uh, a primary campus. If there is no primary campus, if there is no primary university, uh, I mean, I'm looking at a case where the one degree is from one university and the other degree is from a very far away place, you know, completely different from some other place. In that case, a, some primary anchoring campus has to be there because of several other reasons also. I'll not go into those. Those can also be like accounting, this and that, who gets the degree, which university gets the, you know, the, the, the fruits of the alumni and the recognition because some alumni have done well. You know, all that can be managed, but what cannot be compromised or cannot be negotiated is the student's experience of a campus. A student cannot, you know, be, be like a satellite moving from here and there, picking up some things from here, picking up some things from there. While domain knowledge for a degree can be picked up in pieces, you know, life skills, personality development, only can be picked up as a wholesome, from a wholesome experience. And that is necessary. It makes one primary campus necessary. So that I would say. So elements in place, we are moving in the right direction. We need all of that. But the flag is one primary campus. Not for the degree, not for the domain, but for the development of the whole generation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, coming to Siddharth Chaturvedi. So uh, Professor Ghosh talked about you know the worry that it should not become a fad just for the sake of it. At this stage, at this juncture, what your university is, you know, uh, what, what, what are your observations and what is your approach? How will you take it forward? Yes, so uh, I think, uh, you know, first of all, making this 
uh, announcement is at least one step in the right direction where we are not just talking about multidisciplinary approach as a theory, but we have gone one step ahead and enabled it. So at the policy level, it is uh, definitely a right step in, the, you know, in that direction where we're saying that we're not just talking, we're also enabling the change. Talking about it at an individual level, it's a great thing because it is, fine, it is ultimately empowering an individual with the right of choice. I mean, if you want to do more than one program, you're welcome. By all means, if you want to do more than two, I mean, an individual, uh, if they want to learn more, they can also do that. But once you scale it up at a society level and at an institutional level, that is where the challenges, you know, start coming in. My first point would be what, you know, ma'am was referring to. What is it which cannot be achieved by choice-based credit system and major minor, which will be achieved by having to do two degrees at the same time? That is one question which needs to be answered. Not just answered, it needs to be detailed out in simple language for parents, for teachers, for administrators, and last but not the least, for students. That, you know, what is the ultimate advantage in pursuing two degrees? Of course, I mean, theoretically, we, we know that multidisciplinary approach can be inculcated. Uh, there is one significant uh, advantage in terms of, you know, crunching the time. Uh, I mean, in a course of three or probably four years, you uh, graduate with two degrees and uh, you're probably also hedging your risk uh, to some extent in the sense that uh, at, you know, uh, an early stage where you probably don't know the entire aspect and you choose one course, uh, you now choose another one and see how the world changes and how the uh, ecosystem pans out and hence you land with a better chance of building a career uh, with, you know, two of your qualifications at hand. But if you extend that, then the other thing is if, you know, we are enabling this just for the sake of getting degrees or really uh, for the, you know, uh, for the ultimate objective of education, which is to gain knowledge. Can the student really gain in-depth knowledge and rigor in two degrees which he is pursuing, he or she is pursuing simultaneously? Uh, which brings us to the, uh, you know, challenges of the existing system as it is. I mean, we are talking about employability, we are talking about the curriculums not being strong. We want to make the curriculums, you know, very strong for the existing courses to start with. We want to have more internship, apprenticeship opportunities, uh, OJT, industry visit. If we are going to do that with all the courses, imagine the academic rigor which the student has to go to to have the same kind of discipline in two, uh, you know, degrees. So these are some of the, uh, you know, challenges which I think, uh, th these are the questions which need to be answered in detail. Uh, and uh, frankly, I think a lot of discussion and uh, debate needs to happen around this topic uh, at multiple levels, uh, you know, in our country for this to be percolated down well uh, for the common person. Lastly, I think, uh, the other thing uh, would be, you know, for willing and bright students and students who can afford, this is a great uh, opportunity. Uh, but our major challenge as a country still remains the gross enrollment ratio and getting more students in the higher education net to start with. So are we making another policy which is going to exclude the rural students who probably have to be counseled at the first place to join a higher education course, uh, you know, and students who also cannot uh, probably afford uh, you know, even one course, uh, and they would like to join uh, probably two degrees. Are we excluding such students with this uh, policy would be another one. And uh, finally, I would like to say that the disciplines which might, uh, you know, and now from our perspective, what we are thinking about is, you know, two possible combinations. One is, uh, you know, as Sir was saying, a degree at a primary uh, campus in India plus an international degree which will be, can be pursued online, which was not possible earlier. It was possible only with a twinning uh, program, but to have two degrees, one uh, from uh, Indian University and one from outside uh, can be enabled, which is an additional perspective for the student. And the other combination could be a mixing up of discipline, one core discipline uh, for the primary degree and a vocational oriented degree at the side to, to improve his employability and career prospect. These are two possible combinations which can be uh, put forth for dual degree implementation. I'll stop uh, at this right now. 
So while we do not have any one from school segment, but I would still like to know uh, from you. Um, uh, you talked about um, the, the need for you know mapping because parents have to be counselled. So that presupposes the need for very good counselling uh, options at school level because uh, students will be then entering uh, an area about which they are not really aware. Second, it will then lead to a lot of readjustments uh, and uh, realignment in college curriculum. So what are your thoughts on these two aspects? Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks very much for inviting me. Yeah, I think that uh, first of all, the thing that, uh, because wh whatever had to be said on this, I think has been said by three very accomplished people, but I think what concerns me is that, you know, uh, uh, we are degree mongers, you know, as a country, especially parents. So, uh, you know, are we going to give it a thought that do I at all need two, two degrees? Uh, do I have two passions? I mean, that's, that's per perhaps what is behind this. And uh, uh, do I have the capability? And is it feasible? Or uh, are we going to say that, you know, my distant cousin has done two degrees, so how can he not do two? So, you know, it can become like a, an aspirate, you know, rather than being as for some students who are really capable, we want to, you know, kind of empower them with wings. And he said that if you have the capability, you know, I am giving you an option. Options are always good. You know, not, I mean, there's nothing wrong with an option. Okay, because it, it doesn't take away anything, it just gives you something extra. Uh, but when that option starts becoming a, you know, a glamorous option and then we chase it, you know, that is where I think it's going to get scary because not only from the student side, because the students would be confused and they might feel, you know, like deprived if they're not doing two degrees because others are, so that's one. And the second is that even from institutional perspective, you know, there are large institutes that have the resources to do this. Uh, but there would be smaller institutes who struggle more to get students and they might look at a dual degree as something necessary to, to attract students and, and that's where the compromise in quality and all that that uh, our panelists were talking about becomes a reality because you know end of the day I want to be, I want to make the announcement that I also, so I'm talking from real practical what, what I see because I come from the smallest school here, you know we run a, an autonomous AICT approved uh, MBA program. And when I look at the undergrads that we are getting, and some of them could have, you know, uh, are, haven't even imbibed what they could have in one single degree. So, you know, looking at two degrees for most of the people is going to be really tough. So I think, so counseling becomes, as you said, an absolute necessity. But when you talk about infrastructure, I think our counseling infrastructure is not very great. Okay, uh, and, and so you are now saying that you know, the onus comes on the schools to increase that infrastructure to have those counselors who can actually counsel them whether they need a dual degree or not. So I think that's where, you know, as, a, as I said, as an option, it's great. But I think that, uh, uh, you know, and, and I don't think everything can be designed by the policy because behavior cannot be designed by the policy, right? And that's where my concern is that behavior might actually lead to a lot of, uh, you know, heartbreak uh, and, and uh, people. And, and I think that uh, multidisciplinary is a great thing. But every discipline that you want to kind of get into does not mean you have to do a degree in that. Because a degree is a, is, is, is a very rigorous thing, right? I mean, you know, you three years or, or even four years you spend on something and you really learn deep. Now, now you want to do two of that, and as I said, there will be some students. I have seen students in my life who, who I, I, can, I can see could have done two because they used to do great and still had a lot of time. And a third thing is, you know, if you look at the NEP, it gives so much emphasis to holistic education. That, you know, you need to not just get, do academics, but you need to also learn life skills and you need to, you know, sport and art and all of that. Now, if the poor child is doing two degrees, then what happens to the rest of the holistic part? Okay, so I, I think that uh, it, it, I think it should start as more of an exception rather than the rule. Uh, but my concern is that, uh, you know, because like today MBA is the new graduation. So I don't, I hope that dual degree does not become the new degree. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, you know, and then you are a, you know, jack of two but master of none. So even from a recruiter perspective, does the recruiter want somebody who knows a bit about this or, or 
knows something really well is another question we have to answer. Yeah, so this, yeah. All of you have mentioned the aspect of, you know, the worry that uh, it might lead to further deprivation and, you know, uh, segregation. Uh, and uh, you raised this point, so I would start with you, uh, if you can elaborate on that. Yeah, uh, I think uh, I made m very many points, and I think it have been really good points uh, were elaborated by the panelists further. Uh, this, you know, the fad I talked about, I mean, you heard that, that in India, uh, we often, because of lack of proper advice, by people who actually know, uh, you, if you are, particularly when you are experimenting with such things, you get misguided into doing something that may not be your cup of tea. Uh, I am not even convinced that a proper multidisciplinary single degree program, which we have done, you know, I was at Shivnada for 10 years, a very successful uh, program in all disciplines, and they're all, they all had the multidisciplinary character, and you don't really give the subject knowledge. You do not teach them what to think, but you teach them how to think. So if the world changes, which it is, Corona showed us that, then in, a, in an unprecedented situation, these students would be able to think because they know how to think. And I think that education is in itself quite rounded, quite holistic, and quite doable. The problem with the dual degree, first, I mean, I give you an hypothetical example because you asked, uh, supposing somebody was actually either supplementing or financing education by a job and then continuing to do a degree, uh, a dual degree would make it impossible. I can tell you that because the course load would be so much, there will be no time to breathe. So the holistic part of the education that everybody talked about, a degree uh, is not just a certification, it's not a piece of paper. Uh, a lot of things go into a degree holder at that particular age. So uh, we should also talk about different sections of students. Continuing students are a different one. I'm not touching them right now. But the regular students that we see on campus, they have, you know, we learned a lot during corona how and what they need. The digital divide is real in this country. It doesn't matter how much we say that, you know, it's just there have been enough statistics from school also. Pratham had come up with reports. Uh, I've seen most of it. The digital divide is real. And I think if you do a dual degree of the kind I was talking about, five days on a main campus, two days of the weekend online, some normally business programs that, you are, that are available. First, there is a quality problem. Second, you are completely taxed. And this can be done only if you have a credible internet connection. Uh, during corona time, the students of ours who did not have a connection at home, we actually allowed them to stay on campus. Somebody who actually studied in IIT Bombay stayed at Shivnada campus. I'm telling you now because now nobody can catch me. I'm out of <laughs> Shivnada. But this is the reality of this country, that uh, you have to wake up. The digital divide is very, very real. So this is just creating one more layer of, you know, creating an aspiration that seems far off for majority of India. Uh, but I think higher education is also a very privileged sector. It's not for everybody. And I say this with full responsibility. It's not primary education we are talking about. We are talking about higher education. They're very specialized. And it really need not be for everybody. The kind of uh, education that now universities should uh, impart on students are not the ones that can be performed by machines. I've been saying it for the last 11 years. You know, uh, in robots, uh, machines are capable of doing most of the rote jobs. Then you do not want to create an university graduate who would actually be specialized on those rote jobs. So vocational part we need to rethink. So human beings more and more would be taking up the leadership roles that hopefully, and creative roles, which hopefully machines are still lagging behind. Because, you know, we have a left brain and a right brain. The left brain can be coded, can be programmed. Right brain is visual and intuitive, cannot be coded. So if your curriculum can mingle the two parts in some way, project-based learning, program-based program learning, holistic learning, then you'd retain your advantage over machines. So what I'm talking about, that this is not a dream of city children. This is a dream of all of India. And I think this is a global problem, but it's pretty much Indian problem as well. So we need to rethink education, not in terms of uh, you know, uh, making them skilled in a particular uh, 
area, that skill is going to go out of business in no time. The world has lost many of the jobs that were prime when I was a kid. And the new jobs that have come up, I've never heard of them when I was in school. So I think the point is that in facing today's world, dual degree is, you know, we, we are probably paying too much attention to this. It's a good freedom to have. One point that was made, it was very nice. Actually, I suffered. Uh, at Shiv Nader, we had a joint degree, pro dual degree program with Carnegie Mellon, where uh, the degree was to be given both by Shiv Nada and Carnegie Mellon. We could not do it because dual degree, <laughs> after signing the MOU, we could not do it because I learned that regulatory permission was not there. So those things uh, come into being without any problem. There are many, many such new things you can think of, uh, but uh, that was mentioned already, and this, was, this reminded me that that was a real problem. But otherwise, for people who are already, they don't have access to higher education, then now you're dangling another thing towards them without assessment. You know, assess that. It's not for everybody. Some people can do it who are full-time in it. Uh, they would have no other, really, no time for anything else. So I think it creates that, but I think it depends on the language we use. Don't make it like the thing to do, and therefore everybody is going for a dual degree. A single degree uh, with a multidisciplinary curriculum that enables you to face this problem of what we call future of work. Because work is going away from humans to machines. And I think if you can handle that and create those leadership positions, those will be able to change the world before the world changes them. We saw that. This disruption, the black swan event of corona is not a one-time thing. It will happen again. And it will happen again and again. So how prepared are our young generation to face this very uncertain VUCA world? So that's the question. So I think in that empowerment at the basic level is necessary. But it's not for everybody. Not everything is for everybody. Anyway, I maintain higher education is not for everybody. So I think uh, we can, you know, there are many, many things to be done. But higher education should produce the thinkers, the leaders uh, who would lead the world, lead the machines, lead education 5.0, which is between humans and machine. I hope that answers partly. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, coming to Mr. Khanna, uh, Professor Khanna again. So, um, what are those typical, uh, you know, combinations which you would suggest, you know, which are really uh, appropriate for a dual degree, which lend themselves well to dual degree structure? Uh, see, uh, a very, uh, you know, there, there are many ways to answer this question, but one, we can look at what is the evidence in front of us and what we have seen over the years. And what we have seen is that a person who is very, very good or a student who is very, very good in technology and in science, and when they move to corporate or industry, they necessarily have to do uh, or learn a lot of management, whether they learn it on the job or whether the company sponsors them, have special courses for them. But it's an, it has been firmly established that to be in the corporate world, you so uh, you need to know the domain as well as the management. So a natural thing, and that has happened at many places, IIT Roorkee has had a dual degree as, as uh, you know, a program, that, but that happens at <laughs> IIT Roorkee at the same place, so it's very convenient. That has a chemical engineering and a management together. So, so a technology domain and a management is, uh, is the need. That, that should happen. If it is not happening, then it's not the right thing. If people are going to let's say, the corporate world. Uh, that evidence is in front of us. Now, the second is, now uh, in the last five, 10 years, what we have seen is, uh, is that the management degrees also need a lot of uh, you know, extra help in decision making through data science. And, and this is only one, one thing that uh, the managers of today need and tomorrow would need even more. Uh, even though there would be softwares and everything to help them, products to help them but they need to have that inherent understanding of what statistics or data can, can help them with or what it cannot do, especially what it cannot do. So to fully appreciate <coughs> I'm sorry, the, the, the impact of, of data and statistics on management decisions. So for managers, uh, and, and that's already happening, you know, if you talk to Charan Preet, he'll, he'll tell you all about, you know, what Praxis does. In, 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 in terms of marrying the management with data. You know, they've done it very well. 
So, and, and we do do it at NIT also. So we have two major programs. One is around computer science, with a lot of data and technology. And then one is a management program after class 12th. And then these students, they, they mingle, they, they study, do similar courses. So we are already seeing the, how they are growing up. So one is technology with management. The other is management with no particular technology, but a lot of data with it. So these are two for the corporate world. Now I'll come to another level where we are looking at who is going to solve the, the scientific problems of, of, of future, let's say, those will come. And so if you look at the cutting edge of research or, or the frontier area, that is the brain. Now, now all resources are going into the best brains are actually looking at how the brain functions. Now, but which discipline, which degree, you know, the, owns the brain research? Is it, is it, is it biology? Or, or somebody who is in MB, MBBS or biotechnology or biomedical or a, or, or a BSc, MSc, PhD, who, who is, is, is best suited to be trained or to be doing research in, in brain, about brain? Uh, no. Or is it electrical engineering degree students or, or computer scientists through that artificial uh, intelligence or through, uh, you know, cognition or, or through, through those neurons or networks or electrical conductions uh, and signaling, are they the ones who are going to look at the brain? Or, or if you take a step further, or, or people who come from psychology background and psychology degree and trained in those degrees. I'm not talking about a, a, a degree where there is a mix of biology, there is a mix of electrical engineering, there is a mix of computer science, and there is a mix of psychology. And you, when you put up all, all of them and give them one degree, it's not enough. It's, it's so complex that you need to have very deep knowledge of biology. You need to have very deep knowledge of electrical engineering, computer science, and you also need to have a very deep knowledge of how the, what the human behavior is. And that's not possible within a single degree. So if you look at the problems of the future and, and, and look at how the industry, what kind of people would be required in the industry, and what kind of people would be required to do that frontline research, uh, one degree, and I reiterate, one degree and don't deep knowledge in one degree will not be enough. We need to introduce these two concepts in great depth after class 12th. When, when, when that, because you see, if you look at the whole, the way the whole world is arranged, and, and you know, the, the body grows till 25, the emotional, you know, it depends, you know, what kind of experiences one has had. You know, that emotional maturity comes at that age. Uh, you know, people, people start their own home. The, the world is all arranged around, you know, 20, 25. And so a so lot of learning has to happen before that. You cannot, uh, you know, do this and then, I mean, of course you would, but then majority of learning has to happen where, uh, you know, the rest of the society can take care of that. You know, uh, uh, higher education is a privilege, but it, it happens only when the rest of the society takes care of those, uh, those things. So, so in another way also, you cannot, you know, do this and then pick up later at the age of 30 and 35, you know, the price for making a mistake, the price for not being productive at that age, uh, you know, the emotional price, the, the personal price, the price to the society is much, much more than what, what it is at the age of 20. So, so everything has to be over as, as you know, at 25 is about, about the most where all these basic things have to be taken care of. You see, I mean, th there is the biological age, you see, the way the, 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 the way the human body grows and matures. So all of that primary things which would be required for future for, for next 60, 70 years, I mean, even if you uh, account for the reskilling and everything that would necessarily happen, these core domains or the depth of the knowledge that would be, ha that has to be gotten through a degree, which I would say, you know, a lot of courses in the same, so I would say that is a degree. And, and, and if these are required in the corporate world, in the, in the scientific problems, then they have to be, we have to find a way to make it successful, at least for the people who can do it or, or who would like to do it. You see, I, anything that we do, I personally, and I've seen, and if you look back and look at back all the experiences that we have had in the last five, 10, 20 years, operational issues, affordability issues have always been there is a way to take care of them. It would always happen and they should never be in my view, should never stop us from moving forward. Otherwise we'll never move forward, you see. 
some people, and that's how ISC came into being, you see. I mean, they, they, there's, there's a huge debate, you know, why, why Tatas would put money in ISC, you know, for a privileged thing. But then they decided, you know, this has to be done, otherwise how would we, how would we progress? So, so we progress, we keep this differential, make it aspirational, and, and some people would, you know, aspire for it. That's, that, that's aspire, I would see as a motivation, not as, as a depression, you see. I mean, that would, and whatever you do, you see, some people would, 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 would not be able to take part in that, you see, whatever you do. So, so you just look at what is necessary for our civilization. What are the problems that we are going to face, scientifically, industrially, corporate-wise, that the industry that runs the civilization. Now, industry would need two degrees. Industry would not function with one domain expert. And science, research would not function with just one, one deep knowledge. So, so it has to be done. And, and not just two degrees, but a whole lot of, you know, things. One primary degree and a whole lot of, you know, certificates, diploma, this, that, you know, one month course, three months course, all kind of things would happen. That's how I see things. Uh, coming to you, Mr. Charanjit Singh, uh, I want to know from you also the recruiter perspective. Uh, so the relevance of um, dual degree when it comes to uh, employment and job market. Look at it from two. I have been a recruiter for about you know 15 years of my career, and now I I, I actually have recruiters coming and uh, recruiting our students. So uh, it's very difficult question to answer whether a recruiter would prefer somebody with a dual degree. First of all, you know the industry is not a uh, not a homogeneous mass. You know, there are different kinds of companies and within companies are different kinds of people. I mean, I'm telling you, you know, you talk to two top guys in a company, one would say, I would love a dual degree, the other guy would say, I won't. So it's, it's luck who lands up at your campus. I mean, it's, it's as open as that. So, you know, we can't really have a theory here, number one. And number two, if I look at outcomes, I mean, if you, for example, you know what uh, Professor Khanna said, uh, that if you have an integrated, let's say, technology and management degree, you, there, is, there is a very clear need for that. Now, whether you do a B.Tech and then do an MBA or you do an integrated one, maybe you'll save a year or something, I think the recruiter is happy with both. Uh, so there, there's, there's no confusion there. So maybe you can shortcut the time you get it, that's that job that you want if you have the capability, right? And, and in, the, in, in, the, in the corporate world, you don't really go too deep into either. I mean, you know, you don't you don't need a design guy or uh, somebody who who's, who's going to do a, a huge amount of R&D. Th they want people who can kind of run the company, right? So th I think that's okay. But when you when you get into overall recruitment, so uh, today, like uh, as you know, as uh, uh, Professor Khanna again mentioned, the two hot skills are data and technology, right? So here, I think again, the threshold is so low that if you know a little bit of stats, you get you get placed, okay? Yeah, because the, the, the scale is so high. <laughs> I mean, sometimes we are surprised at the guys who get placed. I mean, so uh, I think that uh, dual degree as a... Du a dual degree as a differentiator for recruitment, I, I don't think that I have an answer to that because I don't, I don't think the industry is at all thinking about it because I don't think a lot of them even know that this discussion is happening. And uh, I don't know how they will process it. They will look, they'll come for an interview. They'll have a very clear job profile. They will talk to you. If you, if they feel you can do the job, they will recruit you. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, Thank you. That's, that's my thing. Uh, finally, uh, Mr. Chaturvedi, before we uh, have questions from the audience, uh, I would like to know from you, what are your plans for the university? And also, if you are, th you know, if you would have studied some other models of dual degrees already being offered, so would you like to share some successful uh, models? Yeah, so uh, just to keep it short, as I mentioned, uh, you know, I have seen uh, 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 India plus uh, outside India degree combination working well, which has which also has a good, uh, you know, uptake from the students, from the parents, and is more manageable, right? So that mode uh, under the regulations, which says one physical plus the other in ODL or online mode, is something which can be put to work. Uh, and second, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, again, I would say 
uh, one core degree plus one uh, another one which is more of vocational uh, focus is another combination which we would like to experiment uh, technology plus management is a clear uh, you know combination which uh, is there but apart from that uh, you know some of the other ones would be uh, a bachelor degree in management uh, and economics or a bachelor degree in science and computer applications or, or a bachelor degree in arts and uh, law or uh, you know a masters in uh, business and let's say a specialized one uh, which is uh, you know your hospital uh, management so a, a, a domain plus a general uh, this thing which you know again <laughs> probably brings us back to the thing what is it which cannot be solved by specialization which needs the uh, you know another degree so that is uh, one uh, you know basic uh, question one last point uh, which is uh, slightly off you know the uh, higher education domain but since you know we also work in the skills space extensively we are grappling with an issue as in as a country to make skills and vocational training very aspirational right uh, and we have the tendency for you know whatever legible reasons for students to go to higher education more than skills and courses by introducing a dual degree uh, flexibility an option are we further going to do a little bit of disservice to the skills industry which is anyway struggling to make skills and vocational training and iti courses more aspirational is a larger question which needs uh, to be answered because at the end of uh, you know the day we need more and more skilled manpower who will probably come at a certificate or a one year diploma course to you rather than a two you know full simultaneously side by side degree programs so i would stop at that thank you uh, we have time for two questions so uh, uh, sir please and then you yeah. okay should i yeah please thank you for the elaborate dis deliberation over here i'll just highlight one angle which remained intangible while policies are made the lowest strata of the society is always considered now if we look at the whole of the nation and think of a lower town class the lowest town class that we think about and a mediocre student from a middle class or below middle class family the aspiration is to get a degree from a government college which is still not easy because if i want to get a college of my choice i won't get the college, you know stream of my choice there are limitations for that given that thing dual degree gives him or her well this question is more relevant for girls he i mean she will be in the you know proximity of her residence given that thing dual degree will open avenues for her why i'm saying because connectedness is the future tomorrow today's urban planning is no more just urban planning it's more of data center management today's automobiles mobility things are more of like computers now how will that entity from a lower town class get himself or herself equipped for these level type of jobs where jobs will be demanding this we are talking at a very so creamy you level. have to uh, summarize the yeah, question yeah we are talking yeah. at a very creamy level that's the thing i wanted to put sure. forward okay. see when you look at focusing at the lowest strata and looking at the most you know the the person with the least privilege uh, they, they, we, we can discuss about about how to bring the whole humanity up and the whole civilization progress there are many models for this and it is it is action at multiple points multiple levels and one of them is is to to create that solution that technology that would then the fruits would percolate everywhere so we need those vanguards we need people to move forward so we need to invest in the forward army also so that the forward army then solves problems which can then be used by the thing so it's the, the answer probably lies in a mix of things so so there would be situations where uh things would be focused on the fastest moving and the most privileged ones that's that's a strategy wise if you look at the whole thing at this thinking of looking at the lowest strata to my mind it's very difficult to see it being there in all actions so you have to see that overall policy 
some, some parts here, some parts there, some parts there, and as a whole, you, you give a child a pathway. You know, that's how I be, think that any child, if there is a pathway which is dependent on hard work, and if that hard work and pathway can lead to an honorable life, I think that's, that's what the yardstick is in my mind personally. You see, if that can be assured that doesn't matter what your situation is, doesn't matter what you're gifted with, uh, if there is a pathway which you can take solely dependent on hard work and you can lead to a very honorable way of living and, and earning, you see, that is, I think, the, the yardstick. But to, to break every action into that every action has to have this component of, of looking at the lowest strata, I think that will not work and that doesn't work. So as a whole, you, you divide. I, 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 I agree to that point, but not at every action. One last yes. question. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Quick still, question, yeah. Yeah. yes, still recently there was a debate about uh, engineering degree being a general degree like MBBS, like uh, not a civil, mechanical, electrical and all this. They, but what happened to that? They say master degree to be a specialized like MD. Well, that is left out. Now we are talking about dual degree. So why not to complete one thing and start a new thing? This is, uh, even though it's very close to, to higher education and, and to the whole question, but maybe not so much related to a to dual degree. See, uh, there are two aspects of any degree. One is the practice aspect and the other is research and, and future, you know, generation of knowledge aspect. So there has to be a mix of this. There has to be a, a workforce or people who are willing and are equipped and skilled to do the practice. And for that practice would mean that chemical engineering would always exist. Mechanical engineering would always exist. Doesn't matter, uh, you know, what happens elsewhere in the world, civil, electrical, mechanical, textile, they would always exist because you need that practice. You need people with those skills and practice to keep everything moving. Uh, on the other hand, if you want to move forward, then you need to have people who understand the whole, and I can, I can, you know, we can discuss this over hours, uh, four hours, and uh, uh, physics, chemistry, maths, biology, humanities, you know, all these basic sources of knowledge, philosophy, and if you look at all of them, and then make every person understand how a physicist thinks, or how a biologist thinks, or, or picks up, and, and, and this can be very interesting, maybe something that you can do later, is to look at, and I can ask all of you to do a simple experiment. Look at all the solutions that have worked. Look at all the technologies that have worked. And you will see that most of them would have some component from biology, some component from chemistry, some component from physics, and a lot of components from humanities and social sciences. So, so forget about the engineering disciplines. If you look at the primary knowledge sources, unless, and, and I'll just add, the, the problems that these knowledge sources solve actually come from the humanities lens. Because any problem that does not come from the humanities lens or is not funneled through the humanities lens, and the solution is also not funneled back to, through the humanities lens, it will not work. So, so it, this, this synthesis can, can happen at many levels, but practice dependent or practice heavy degrees would always exist. But we, we need me. that, that nuts and bolts are required. And thank you so much for this wonderful discussion. Thank you so much.